Before we get to the surprise, normless episode, a small bit of house cleaning. First, you didn't just get this channel to 152 subscribers. You crushed it with 153. You guys are the best. Keep it up, and a thousand is right around the corner. Second, we have surpassed 16,000 views on YouTube alone. Add that to the approximately 17,000 plus from other analytics, that's 33,000, which I am ever so grateful for. Lastly, among other things, I recently posted one of my Signs of Norm on Patreon. If you want to join in on the fun and support the show, click the link below for the key to unlocking additional silliness. Thank you for all of your support. Okay, here we go. The Vault of Silliness has surprised us today with quite the find. A 32-year-old cassette that sounds like it was recorded yesterday, hailing from Friday, April 26th, 1991. We have Steve Matarano hosting, and his guest is none other than Henny Youngman. He's in studio and sounding fantastic. He was going to be appearing at Nick's Comedy Stop in Randolph and Framingham. He also had a new book about to be published, Take My Life, Please. Let's call this one A Henny Good Time. You will hear the whole hour uninterrupted news, traffic, and commercials. All of it. I love how clean the station sounds. No frills, no noisy sounders behind every update and voice. It's really great. Lots of topics are discussed. Vaudeville, his recent commercial endeavors, and a hit movie. He was going to be doing some dates with Milton Berle and Red Buttons that October. Dial a joke. Then we get a little treat where David Brudnoy calls in to tease his show that would feature William F. Buckley as his guest. David uses a normism quite nicely. We get Diane Stern with the news, Jeff Brown with traffic, AccuWeather with Alex Sisnowski, then back to Steve and Henny, and they take a call from Grace, who had listened to Henny on the Kate Smith Show way back when. Al Jolson, Frank Sinatra, George Burns, and more legends are talked about. And I mentioned commercials. So many commercials. All right, gamblers, check your tickets. You ready? College Financial Planning Services of New England. Steve does a commercial read for a book, Massachusetts, by Nancy Zaroulis. He also does a read for U.S. Protective Alarms in Waltham. There's a Peter Mead promo. Safe, dependable oil heat sponsored by the Qualified Fuel Oil Dealers of Massachusetts. Texaco in their System 3 gasoline. Louise's Home Style Pasta Company. News Center 5 and a Chronicle promo. Another promo, this time for WBZ News and a special report, The Excise Tax with Jacqueline Goddard. Richard Simmons for Scratch, Save, and Win at the Cambridge Side Galleria, Emerald Square, Liberty Tree, and Arsenal Malls. We're treated to a Spirit of New England jingle. Say that a few times fast. Steve does a movie ticket giveaway for a Sylvester Stallone movie, Oscar. Also, you're entered to win a General Cinema prize package with a grand prize Get ready. It's a $50 gift certificate to the Hilltop Steakhouse, two free six-month memberships to LA Fitness, and a $40 gift certificate to Chili's. Oh, don't forget the four Stallone video cassettes. 9X Mobile. What a plan they offer. The club and Operation Lockup. United Van Lines with Stiller and Mira. Sleeper Showcase. You know what? <laughs> They're going out of business and having a sale. And then Steve does a commercial read for LoJack. Prevent, alert, and retrieve. Whew. We close with a classic top hour sounder and then some news and traffic. Episode 136, A Henny Good Time, fiddles its way to your ears. Now. Thank you, Diane. Good afternoon, everybody. I would uh, <clears throat> like you very much to uh, take the opportunity for the next hour to put all of your aggravation on hold. And uh, don't forget where you put it, though, because we'll have to come back to it a little bit later on. But for the first hour of the Steve Martirano program, I invite you to join us as we spend some time with Mr. Henny Youngman, uh, the legendary Henny Youngman, who is in town uh, working, which is what uh, Henny Youngman does. He works and he works and he works. He's uh, going to be at uh, Nick's Comedy Stop tonight in uh, Randolph at 8 and 10 o'clock. Yeah, tonight, Nick's. Nick's. Tomorrow night. 
Frank Nixon, Framingham. I can't get you a mic yet. There we go. Framingham and Randolph. Randolph tonight, Framingham tomorrow night. Yeah, two shows tonight, two, eight and ten. So you're uh, you're slowing down, right? Only two shows yeah. tonight. <laughs> I used to play the uh, RKO Theater, they four shows a day. That's right. I mean, so, you, ago, so yeah. you're slowing down. I had a lovely, lovely memories of this town. I played the Latin Quarter for Lou Walters years ago, and I played the Mayfair which is owned by a fellow named Redstone years ago. I want to be still alive. I don't know, actually. I, let me ask you something about, uh, about uh, Boston. I mean, is, Boston doesn't occur to me. I've only been here about three or four years now. Uh, it doesn't occur to me to be a, a, you know, a rollicking, funny joint, a place. I mean, they, they seem more uh, uh, pleased to grumble than they do to laugh. Huh? What's your experience with Boston? I think the audience is great here. They laugh at the questions. <laughs> <laughs> if you have good jokes, they'll laugh. That's your answer. Is that right? Sure. Is that the same anywhere, right? Sure. Yeah. Omaha, anywhere. Yeah. Omaha. Oh, yeah. Omaha's a... I do a show there once a year for 10,000 people outdoors. It's a big charity affair. They bring me in, another act, and uh, it's great. They seem to laugh at the jokes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, speaking of which, are there any new jokes? Oh, yeah. Every day there's new jokes. Do people give them to you? Do you buy them? No, no. I have friends on the coast, writers, former writers that are still in business out there, and we, we call up, and they make up the jokes. If I like them, I do them. If I don't laugh at it, I don't do them. I can't imagine what it's like to call Henny Youngman and, and you know, <laughs> hey, I got a joke, Lynn. I mean, very few people call me with jokes. They don't know them. Hey, that's hearsay, you know. Yeah. Professional jokes are made to order. And if I have to do a, a television show, I need six minutes. I have it written. And I pick out what I like, and I do six minutes. So you, so it's not true that you're stealing these jokes from one another? I never did. No, it was never Burl had to. I had seven writers on a Kate Smith show. So who was stealing? It was Milton Berle who's alleged. Nah, was. that's a... <laughs> when, it was, when Milton Berle was, was starting out, there were seven vaudeville theaters in New York. He used to send his brother around to hear what the other guys are doing. And they brought the jokes to him. He did them. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody, mi you know, nobody minded sure them? Sure they did. Yeah. What good did it do? <laughs> you know, who cared? Are you, working, are you working harder now? No, I don't work harder. I never work hard. Yeah, yeah. I use charm. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I never work hard. Has your, I mean, you know, you've been in this business a very long time. Uh, uh, have you, and uh, from this side of the, uh, of the uh, uh, act, it doesn't look like much has changed for you. No. People are people. Either you're funny or you're not. What do you, it's as simple as that? That's yeah, why you've well, endured? Sure. That's why uh, people still pay to come see you? That's sure. why they're still laughing? Sure. Take them away from their troubles yeah. for a while. That's what I try to do. So you were what? You were what? Born funny, right? Did somebody make I you? I think so. Yeah. I think I was born funny. Yeah. I think it's an attitude that you take... And by luck, I found out I could make a living at it. Well, tell I was me a fiddle player. I played fiddle. I had a band, a funny band, like Spike Jones years ago. All the guys were funny. And we used to get jobs. If I played in the Flatbush, we were the Flatbush Ramblers. Wherever we played, we took the local name. Right. In case there was a fight in the hall, <laughs> they'd, leave, they'd, leave, they'd leave us alone. They'd leave the know. local kids alone. Yeah. We were in Boston. I was the Boston uh, High Riders. <laughs> Uh, in Bay Ridge, we were the Bay Ridge Five. Was it a big act? Was it a big act? Five people. We were co comics. And you all played musical instruments? Yeah, that was it. And we had a lot of fun. Just, just, uh, so when was this? How long? How far? Oh, many, ago? many years ago. Yeah. Let's not talk yeah, 40 right. years we ago. We won't do that. And one night I went out and did my jokes at a place. I had a very tough boss. He used to stab me good night. <laughs> <laughs> the check room girl's name was Rocco. <laughs> and uh, one night a comic didn't show up and danced to him so the boss used to hear me clowning telling jokes he said look you gotta save my life I got a banquet here nobody to go on go on do your jokes I went out I was a riot I had everybody's jokes which I had gathered he said let the band go I'll keep you I became a comic and that, <laughs> uh, that, uh, by accident yeah. yeah but you kept the fiddle with you oh that was protection is that right <laughs> yeah Anybody came at me, I had to fiddle. <laughs> I played two ways, for pleasure or revenge. 
<laughs> I meet Isaac Stein once in a while in a restaurant. I say, you're late for your lesson. I, I rib him. Is right? <laughs> Are you, can you play that thing? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, I studied seven years in vain, in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> when Isaac Stern heard me play, you know what he said? No, what? Break his fingers. <laughs> Where are you from, Henny? I'm from heaven. <laughs> are you a New York boy? I was boy? born in London. I was born in London, in Whitechapel. When, a, when the Jewish folks got out of Russia, a lot of them went to London. Uh -huh. There was a neighborhood called uh, Stre Cressy Houses, which I visited. When I played the Palladium in London, it's still the same. Garden apartments, a lot of Jewish people live there yet. Although, when I went to Bloom's Restaurant, which is in Whitechapel, where we all used to go, they tell me the Pakistanis are there now. They've taken over the town. And when I went to the London hospital, I wanted to do a benefit for them. They wouldn't let me do it because there's no room in the hospital to do a benefit. But that's where I was born. I took pictures and the whole thing for my new book, which is coming out soon for, take, by William Morrow. Take my life, please. It's, take my life, please. I might have lived. <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, it seems to me you've waited a decent uh, length of time to uh, to write your. your I wrote story. one sixteen years ago. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but then it. But even I, then, I left out a lot of stuff. A lot of the nightclubs where I worked with some of these hoodlums. Because my wife would have been frightened. She didn't know where I worked, and I never told her, you know. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about that. Because Do that. When, <laughs> I shall. <laughs> when, we, when we come back after we take care of a and bit of... Are going to make a comeback again? We are going to make a comeback. I make, I make three I or four a, a I day. I make a comeback with every joke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in case you have not guessed, Henny Youngman is our guest here at WBZ. You're invited to join us, by the way. 254-1030 uh, is the phone number, and we'll uh, give you a chance to uh, maybe sell a joke to... Uh, to Henny, or ask him to repeat four or five hundred of uh, your favorite Henny Youngman uh, one-liners. 254-1030 is the phone number. We'll check traffic just ahead on the Steve Martirano program. The uh, First, though, a look at these uh, top stories from WBZ News. The five-game suspension holds for Roger Clemens. Baseball Commissioner Faye Vincent upheld the suspension for Clemens' behavior during Game 4 of the playoffs last year. The uh, suspension will begin tonight. That means Roger misses uh, a turn in the rotation, and he's out about 100 uh, thousand plus, as a matter of fact. Meanwhile, Governor Weld is meeting this afternoon around two o'clock with his cabinet members after reports that he's okayed a billion dollars in budget cuts. One critic says forty thousand people will be abandoned by the state in its general relief fund if it is wiped out. And finally, a Brockton man is charged in the death of a man whose body was found in his backyard in Plymouth. Robert McGovern identified as the victim. Stephen Lee of Brockton reportedly confessed to the crime. We'll have news updates at the bottom of the hour. Jeff Brown is in the BZ 24-hour traffic network. Jeffrey, uh, it's a great day. What's happening? It is a beautiful day out there, and uh, roadways are getting back to normal. We did have that earlier accident scene on Route 1 in the Foxborough area, right in the middle of the roadway, and that has been taken care of. Traffic should be getting back to normal there shortly. Uh, 128 south by Route 3 south. Of course, that ongoing work project still tying things up for this afternoon. That's uh, in the Lexington and Burlington area by Routes 4 and 225 to watch out for. Downtown area is a breeze this afternoon. No problems coming in on the Tobin, just a minor slowdown on the lower deck of 93 and the expressway travels well in both directions. Have a great afternoon. Jeff Brown, WBZ 24-Hour Traffic Network. Shattered dreams, shattered futures. Not what we want for our children. But government cuts in education, stricter guidelines for obtaining financial aid, and skyrocketing tuition costs have shattered many students' dreams of a college education. Gregory A. Leonard of College Financial Planning Services of New England can help. If you're the parents of a junior in high school, now is the time to find out how you can keep your child's dream alive. The people at College Financial Planning Services of New England know how the financial aid process works. They know where the money is, and they know how to get your fair share. When it comes to an education, they'll leave no stone unturned to get the money you need for the education your child deserves. Call College Financial Planning Services of New England at 617-242-4603 in Boston or look in the yellow pages under College Financial Planning Services of New England. Call 617-242-4603 today. 
And uh, while you're still, and uh, I'm sure you are, in the spirit of Patriots Day, celebrate the great state of Massachusetts. This is wonderful reading this, given what's going on, with a great new novel. All of that notwithstanding, Massachusetts is a fine book written by Nancy uh, Zarulis. And here in one sweeping story of the colony that became a state, the state that became a legend, from as far back as the Salem witch trials to the revolution, from the Civil War to the crash of 29, from the turbulent 60s to the 80s environmental clash. You can witness all the dreams, the drama, and the daring of Massachusetts as seen through the eyes of one fascinating family. The book will uh, keep you spellbound. Critics love it, calling it thoroughly entertaining and sure to please those of you who like James Michener. Massachusetts by Nancy Zarulis. The celebration starts now in hardcover from Fawcett. Here's a look at the Biziaki weather forecast. In a word, fabulous. Highs in the mid to upper 70s. Tonight, the clouds roll in. We get down to about 49 degrees. Uh, Saturday for a BZ family, uh, BC Family Day. It'll be a mixture of sun and clouds. So we could get a uh, thunderstorm in the afternoon, but a terrific day. Uh, nonetheless, a high of 75. And uh, Sunday, a bit cooler mixture of sun and clouds. Highs only uh, in the 50s. And right now we're looking at 71 degrees right here in Boston. Our guest uh, in the studio, Mr. Henny Youngman. Uh, apparently, uh, one of the Sumners is uh, alive and kicking because uh, some yeah, Redstone, Redstone uh, uh, owns all those uh, the General Cinema Theaters. He may have been talking about a brother or uh, or probably his, uh, or uh, or an, an older brother anyway. And uh, Lou Wallace, I played here for him to the Latin Casino years ago. Yeah, Latin Quarter. Latin Latin Quarter. Quarter. Latin Quarter. That was very yeah. popular. And uh, you work I do a lot of private affairs too. You know, I get here quite often. You you also uh, you do trade uh, trade shows, trade shows, yeah, yeah, wherever the job is. Because yeah. I also I also saw you uh, as an after dinner speaker at a uh, a record company uh, a record industry. I don't uh, care what dinner. it is. Just yeah, it was me. great, and you wanted the money right I'll there. Be they, there. They paid right you there. in cash, I think. Right, you have it ready. Tell <laughs> tell me about the joints you used to play. Well, the the tough to... ones though, with the, the with, with the gangsters that that were around. Well, for some reason, they liked me. I just got along with everybody. I even, I was no trouble. I sat with them. I listened to them. And uh, I minded my own business, which is very important. But, but, but was it, well, yeah, right. But yeah, was no, it tough? I mean, you know, they would be yeah, sitting well, in the front. Were, some of them were murderers, you know. There was a place called Alito, Venice, outside of, outside of Patterson. It was on a private island. And that's where they came every night. They laughed, and we got friendly. I sat with them. I wouldn't drink, though, and I think they admired me for that. Is that right? Yeah, I don't touch liquor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was telling my friend Arnie Archer, who you just met. Arnie's here with me today, and he's my opening act on most of my jobs. Not tonight and tomorrow night, but Arnie knows the, uh, he's a big favorite of the Boston Red Sox. And his brother, what is we, it all heard, right? Can Arnie say hello? Get Arnie on the, on the microphone. I heard Arnie groan when he heard about Clemens getting suspended. What would you expect, Arnie? He, Hi, Steve. How you doing? He, uh, Arnie, by the way, is no stranger to folks who listen to uh, Boston radio. He's been uh, on many, many shows in the area. Arnie, you groaned when you heard about Clemens. What would you expect? He, he mouthed well, off. I he... want to know what happened to the umpire, though. What happens with him? Well, I'll probably get a raise, I guess. I mean, uh, by the way, when uh, we looked at the schedule, and when Roger uh, comes back after the five days, the uh, first umpiring then crew. Daniel, hear him swear. There you go. <laughs> well, the first umpiring crew is Terry uh, Terry Cooney. He'll be back well, in town. Well, I have to see that. <laughs> yeah. What's, uh, uh, what's it like opening uh, for uh, Henny? It's real pleasure. As a matter of fact, a few years ago, we played a theater called the, the Old Colony Theater. They sure. still owe me the money. Did you ever get it from me? I don't remember that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there were very few dressing rooms, so we shared the same dressing room uh, for the I was, entire I was, week. I was prettier, though. <laughs> That's right. We almost got engaged. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> don't say no, that nowadays. That's I know right. <laughs> people take you serious, I know. <laughs> and but it was it? a lot of fun, and uh, I emceed that show, believe it or not. Yeah. Oh. And uh, I used to do the first half, and then... Uh, introduce Henny and he'd come out and to do the rest of the show. And, yeah, we have a lot of yeah. fun together. Yeah. What are the crowd? Uh, crowds young now? You see, you play in front of a lot of younger people now, right? I don't care who I play. No, you don't me. care. I know that. <laughs> no difference. <laughs> yeah. I play colleges. Yeah. I do. I do any job. I just did two commercials, one for Residence Inns, that's owned by Marriott. Sure. And I just did A&W Root Beer. That'll be out soon. And I'm in a good picture called Goodfellas. Did you see that? 
I did see that. Sure, I did a scene at the Copa. Of course. You were asleep. I, Tell me the truth. Well, nobody was getting killed, so I went out to get some popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's of yeah. course. Yeah. I was in that picture, and I did a Jane Curtin show, which was canceled. I'm sorry. She's a great gal, Jane Curtin. Yeah. Terrific. And uh, I got the book coming out, and I stay in business. I'm doing some dates with Milton Bell and Red Buttons. Starting October, we'll be doing some Together? 200 Years of Comedians, <laughs> The Golden Boys. <laughs> oh, that'll be great. Where, where, what kind West of places? Westbury Music Fair, oh, yeah. and we're doing some concerts all, all over the country. You know, uh, the, the Red Button's a very funny guy. Yeah, I just changed his name to Blue Zipper. Is that right? <laughs> is he gonna? Is he still do the strange things? Uh, oh, yeah, he's funny. He's cute. He is too. a funny guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you know what I missed? He finally got a dinner, by the way. Oh, did you he? Know that routine. Yeah. <laughs> it's about. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mussolini got a dinner. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah, that he's very yeah. good. Yeah, tell, tell a story about uh, you, uh, dial a joke. You were the first one they used oh, dial yeah. a joke in Manhattan, and it yeah. almost burned out the phone lines. Right. A lot of my plans came through later on in life. I said, "Why can't I tell jokes? Have a guy put a dime in, call up." And get some laughs for the day, you know. Yeah. So it finally came through, and the first month they took in two hundred eighty thousand dollars. And now you have to pay two bucks. Is that yeah? If Very you want to hear some jokes, they paid me. They're not using me because I want to give the money back. They won't take the money back. You want to give the money back? Yeah, because I want to go out in these uh, other stations and do it. They're not using me. In other words, they paid me, but they're not using me. Oh, I see. And I resent that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a big wild, wide world out there with cable. A million stations you can get on, you know, and make it, make the price reasonable. So people can call up and get laughs. You know, we got, uh, we, speaking of which, we have, uh, we have 24-hour comedy channels uh, on, on, on the cable now. And, uh, that's what you think. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean that's what I think? Are we, is, it, is, is life getting funnier? Why are there so many places to work and so many venues for there comedy? There's always been places to work. All you had to do is have a name and be good. As many as, no, but not. How do you play hotels? You got hotels, you got, you got a million places to play if they want you. You never had a problem, right? Not right now. What's the longest you ever laid off? I don't lay off. Really? I'll tell you next week what I'm doing. I'm appearing on a yacht. A guy got a party on a yacht for 50 friends. I'll be sailing up the Hudson River. No kidding. And on the way back, they'll feed us. And then I go on to do the jokes. Now, a girl sent me a letter that was terrific. She said, you're my parents... Favorite comic. I'd like to have you to appear on a on a bus. I'm putting <laughs> twenty people on a bus, a gourmet bus, where you will tell your jokes, I hope, she said. And we feed everybody and we'll have fun riding around New York on a bus. I have appeared on ships. I was on a QE two when I had one of the worst storms in a hundred years. I appeared on that. When are you doing the bus? You did the bus? No, that's uh, the eighteenth. Eighteenth of next month. Kidding. Then I, uh, I was on an airplane once. I did a thing, San Francisco to Las Vegas. There were certain players they brought on the, uh, on the flight. Gamblers. A piano player right. myself. Yeah, yeah. So I've appeared in all all sections of the world. I don't appear on land anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Henny Youngman is our guest. If you've got a question or comment uh, for Henny, by all means, give us a call. We promise to get to you following uh, some business here and a news update at the bottom of the hour. 254-1030 is how you join us on the Steve Martirano program. 254-1030. Henny will be appearing tonight at <laughs> Nick's Comedy <laughs> Stop in Randolph. Two shows at 8 and 10. And then Saturday uh, evening, Nick's Comedy Stop in Framingham for a couple of shows uh, tomorrow evening uh, as well. Attention homeowners, U.S. Protective Alarms, the area's number one installer of high-quality alarm system, has an unprecedented one-time offer. U.S. Protective Alarms is making it possible for you to receive a state-of-the-art, high-tech security system for your home or business, all for only $195, and is complete with free installation and a five-year warranty as well on the parts. There's more, though. If you call the number right away, you can receive a security system for your car absolutely free as part of the purchase of the home alarm system. 1-800-442-USPA. You really can't beat the offer. 
It's the lowest price on a high-tech alarm system for your home or business, plus a security system for the car absolutely free. U.S. Protective Alarms there in Waltham, they've got a toll-free number, 1-800-442-USPA. Your free auto security system could save you 15% on your comprehensive auto insurance. U.S. Protective Alarms, now you can f- afford to feel protected in both your home and your car. Call again for special details on monitoring. 1-800-442-USPA. Hi, this is WBZ's Peter Mead. Please join me tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll conclude our examination of crime and punishment and the problems of the streets of Boston and other cities. We will also talk to a man from the London Times who was covered Margaret Thatcher. We'll take a look at the interesting relationship between American and British leaders, and in particular, Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. Please be with us between 6 and 9, just before David Brudnoy, on Boston's news station, WBZ, AM 1030. They wanted a few thousand dollars to do it. (laughs) They say it'll be worth it, but I don't know how. I mean, prices for both generally even out over time, so there's a good chance I'd be throwing my money away. If you're thinking about changing to gas heat, just consider the cost. It's on my mind a lot, the risk that is. Yeah, I know the chances of anything bad happening are really slim, but I do think about it. Who wouldn't? If you're thinking about changing to gas heat, just consider your peace of mind. Do you know what it's like calling those kinds of places? I mean, they are so big and and impersonal. I mean, by the time you get someone on the phone, much less get them to come out and see you. Well, If you're thinking about changing to gas heat, just consider the service. Once you realize all you might be giving up by converting to gas, chances are you won't want to take that chance. Stay with safe, dependable oil heat. Oil heat. Because changing is chancy. Brought to you by the Qualified Fuel Oil Dealers of Massachusetts. Texaco Technology Report. Subject, System 3 Gasoline. And what octane really is. Octane? Uh, some kind of ingredient, I guess. It's something they mix into your gasoline for power? Uh, I think you can buy it in cans. The truth. Octane is simply a rating system that measures a fuel's ability to resist knocking or performance loss. The problem. As cars get older, they may need higher and higher octane to perform like they used to. The answer. System 3 gasoline technology from Texaco. To help control octane appetite while providing the highest level of engine cleanliness. And System 3 performs in every single octane grade. Still think all gasolines are the same? Texaco System 3 gasoline. It's that good. All right, we are back, and uh, we are going to get a preview of David Brudnoy's program. Boy, do we cover the waterfront here, David. I've got about, I've got about 10 uh, seconds. What? I've got about 10 seconds oh, here no. before I'm racing off to the news. Oh, golly, because I, I wanted to talk about how good Henny was in, in uh, Goodfellas. He just reminded us that and he was, it was in... It was excellent. Really out enters the nightclub, and there's Henny entertaining. It was terrific. Well, if I don't have time to tell you what I was going to tell you, I will only tell you what I wanted to tell you, which is that William F. Buckley will join us tonight. And uh, we shall have him live and in studio at our plush but not overly ostentatious WBZ headquarters. And it should be very interesting. Indeed, last night, the um, former attorney general, I awaited your call with a persuado name, as yeah. some would say. You didn't persuado. No, I thought, I thought for sure you'd handle the wed tech question, but you didn't. No. Uh, David, no one can say WBZ doesn't cover everything, from Henny Youngman to Bill Buckley, all on the same day. It, We'll be listening, sir. It is terrific. Thank you very much. All right, David. Bye bye. -bye. David Brudnoy tonight with William F. Buckley. It is uh, 1 30 on Boston's news station, WBZ AM 10 30. And Diane Stern is in the newsroom. Diane? Thank you very much, Steve. The stories we're watching for you. Governor Weld meeting later today with his cabinet members. It'll be a weekend of meetings, in fact, on the budget and the reported approval of a tentative list of budget cuts totaling a billion dollars. Roger Clemens won't be around for tonight's game or the four after that. Baseball commissioner upholding a five-game suspension for the Red Sox pitcher today for his conduct during last year's American League playoffs.
A spokesman for the banking industry says raising premiums for the ailing Federal Deposit Insurance Fund will only make matters worse. The GAO today said banks should pay $15 billion this year to salvage the nearly depleted fund. And President Bush says some sticky problems remain, despite progress towards setting up a Middle East peace conference. In Jerusalem, Secretary of State Baker said he got some answers during a meeting with the Israeli Prime Minister. Personal tragedy hit Secretary Baker. He learned that his mother had died. She's 96 years old. He's returning now to the United States. We check the roads right now, and for that, here's Jeff Brown and the WBZ 24-Hour Traffic Network. Thank you, Diane. We're picking up word now of a breakdown on the expressway northbound by Mass Ave and also some work crews that are slowly moving along there. Do be patient in that stretch from Mass Ave into the South Station Tunnel northbound on the expressway. Also, 128 south by Route 3 south and that uh, work crew by Routes 4 and 225 in Lexington. That is affecting traffic on 128 and also on Route 3. It's a slow go around there. Elsewhere in the downtown area, not a bad ride. Tobin inbound is a nice one getting through the construction site. Lower deck of 93 heats up around uh, Community College and it's sluggish as you approach the merge. And we do have uh, uh, um, no problems on the artery traveling in both directions. Jeff Brown, WBZ 24-hour traffic network. Catch the NBA on TNT. Tonight at 8, Indiana meets Boston. Then Seattle takes on Portland. NBA action on TNT. To order cable, call 1-800-CABLE-ME. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones 30 industrials down 11.63 at 2,909.41. Now the exclusive WBZ AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Alex Zisnowski. Good afternoon, Diane. We have plenty of sun Sunshine in store this afternoon, a high 75. Temperatures will hold in the 60s right by the water. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 49 to 53. Tomorrow, another warm day with mixed clouds and sunshine, and there could be an afternoon thunderstorm, a high 75. Sunday, much cooler, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, temperatures mainly in the 50s. That's the exclusive WBZ AccuWeather forecast from your official weather station. I'm meteorologist Alex Sisowski. Boston temperature 72, and Steve will have the extended WBZ five-day forecast at 50. I'm Diane Stern on Boston's news station, WBZ AM 1030. Thank you, Diane. And welcome back, everybody. 254-1030 is the phone number. We are spending this first hour uh, on a Friday afternoon with the legendary... Henny Youngman, Henny in town uh, this weekend, appearing tonight at Nick's Comedy Stop in Randolph, and tomorrow night again at Nick's, only this time in Framingham. Two shows at 8 and 10 o'clock, and uh, uh, trust me when I tell you, you, uh, you just are going to enjoy yourself. I don't care how many comedians you think you've seen. <laughs> uh, it's always a delight to see Henny Youngman do what thank he, you, do thank what he you. does. So, do you know my buddy called Bellini? He used to have a little Jack Corner's magic shop here, and uh, they tore that down to put up some condos. And now he has the Boston Costume Shop, where I get all my crazy hats and stuff. Sure, and right a, down here by South Station. Sure, sure, yeah, he's a wonderful guy, and we're always together. You do magic, you said. Now, yeah, now and then. I yeah. have fun with when I do charity, you know, yeah, with yeah. the kids. And uh, uh, I used to be a printer. My father made me learn a trade. I got thrown out of school for being a clown. Maybe learn a trade. I became a printer. So I used to go out two in the morning and hit New York with the musicians. I'd print 200 cards for a buck. I'd get five orders. I'd go home and print them in my cellar. I had a machine my father bought me. I went back and picked up five bucks. I got along pretty good. <laughs> And when did you when did you abandon printing for show business? What was the? I didn't abandon anything. I kept it going. In fact, I'll take an order right now if you give it. <laughs> Two five four ten thirty. The phone number. Grace has been waiting very patiently. Grace, good afternoon. You're on WBZ with Henny Youngman. Hi. Hi. Say, uh, you can say hello to Henny. He's listening. Hello. Okay. How are you? Hi, Henny. It's, you know, I've been a radio buff for years. Well, keep it up. And I'm about twenty years younger than you are. Why do you say a boat? <laughs> You people talk funny. <laughs> when uh, I was a kid, I used to listen to the Kate Smith oh, show. Oh, yeah, I was with Kate Smith two years. Yes, and uh, I remember the first night that you were on with her. You're kidding. I was about nine or ten. And I, I always remember the words you said at the end. You thanked her and so forth, and you said, I'll never forget you. And you said, that's off the record, but I'll never forget you. Kate Smith was a wonderful guy. I'll yes. See. So when I every time I see you on TV or something, I always think of that. Well, yeah, I'm very flattered that you saw that first show because that's the one where I really got lucky. I stayed with it two years, 
and it helped my business really. It was oh. fantastic. Oh, I'm glad. Yes, that's a long time ago. Yeah, I'm really well, dating myself when I said that. So why not? You're still alive. That's what counts. Enjoy right. yourself. Well, best of luck, Annie. Thank you very much. Well, good to hear you. I always enjoy the show. I listen to it every day. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Grace. Yeah, welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 254 1030 is the phone number. Grace, uh, Kate Smith was a, a big star, huh? Well, yeah, she was a really very nice. She did a song called God Bless America, sure. the whole country. Right there. I was there tonight, Irving Berlin sang one chorus. Irving Berlin sang his song. And then the second chorus he wanted to do, they wouldn't let him do a second chorus. Ted Collins sort of nudged him away, and K. Smith picked it up. And you really heard it sung beautifully. Oh, is that what? My question just went right out out of my head. Oh, I know what I was going to ask. You have seen everybody in show business. Uh, Pretty good, yeah, pretty good. Can you? I've often wondered how good Jolson really was. Oh, he was the best. Was he? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not a myth. It's not no, exaggerated. I, was, I hung around. Uh, uh, I hung around him in uh, Hollywood. I was appearing on an NBC o- uh, show out there, and Jerry Letzer and I kept his spirits up when Warner's let him go. I'll never forget. He had a hit picture. The jazz singer was it? What was the picture he the, made? The jazz singer. The jazz singer. Yeah. I was in Chicago at the Chicago Theater. He came in that one day to appear at the Oriental Theater, which had Georgie Jessel. I get a call from the police department. Honey, can you come over? We're coming over in the police car to pick you up. Mr. Jolson wants to see you. It was between shows at Chicago that I went over there, and as Jessel was about to... Oh, Al gave me a kiss. He gave me a kiss. He said, give me a gag to open with, which I gave him. And as he went on a stage, Jessel was supposed to introduce him. He pushed Jessel aside, and he walked on. <laughs> they had had a feud for many years. Yes, right. And Jessel had lost him up here and there, and he never forgot it. And that was his little revenge, pushing him aside. But he really was his, I mean, that's all we ever hear. He was dynamic. Yeah. And there's not, it's not like uh, to, uh, today. It's very interesting today. I mean, uh, ki- uh, kids, people uh, 50 years from now will be able to look at videotapes of some of these performers who are alive today. Yeah, and but be able Sinatra, to see. Sinatra's the same kind of a guy. They'll yeah. never forget Sinatra. Yeah, yeah. I worked with Frank 50 years ago. We were with Tommy Dorsey. And we were in Youngstown, Ohio, and they were having fights all the time, little arguments, you know, petty stuff. I used to be the buffer in between. I'd get between the two of them and patch things up with a gag. Dorsey and Sinatra? Yeah. And uh, when we got to Youngstown, he quit. So the next town was Akron. And a guy hitchhiked out there to replace Sinatra, Dick Ames. Uh-huh. He had a T-shirt. He had a <laughs> war T-shirt. And uh, I see Frank every now and then. He's still great. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, he's uh, he's still working. He's the oh, 75, sure. 75th anniversary, the yeah. anniversary tour. Um, uh who I mean, uh, th- this idea of uh, they'll never forget. I, under- I understand, but uh, you you remember both the men. You remember Jolson. You remember how big Jolson sure. was, and you've seen Sinatra. Now, who's the big? Who can well, you can both, you measure? They're both the legends, and they're in the business. They're both great. Yeah, you can, so you really couldn't you no. couldn't make a decision. They're different who's styles. It. Yeah, yeah, different style. Milton Berle got a nice style. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> I just left California. I went out to visit my son. I did a show out there. And uh, I always go to the Friars Club, which I do in New York every day for lunch. And I see Milton. Milton's the president of the Friars out there. He runs all the big roasts and so forth. And uh, we have laughs. And uh, I'm going out on the road with Milton again in October. Yeah, with uh, that, should be, that should be a wonderful with show. With red buttons, yeah. It should be uh, two hours of laughs because... Uh, Burl is great, and Red's great, and I do good, too, so... Yeah, you don't do bad. People who get us will get a real nice night of laughs. Do you, uh, are you, uh, I'm sure you know George Burns. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. He's so old, when he orders a three-minute egg, they make him pay up front. <laughs> <laughs> He's a terrific guy, George. I mention him because, uh, he, Burl, and you, uh, of the, you know... Main. Well, they were way ahead of me, you know. Oh, really? Is that right? Sure. I wasn't in business yet. Burl was a kid star. That's right. Burl, uh, Burl was. And, yeah, they uh, were they were youngsters, you know, and George Burns and his wife have been around for years before I ever got into business. You were printing. You were still printing. I was doing anything. I was playing fiddle. I was printing anything to make a buck. Uh-huh. 
I was running an elevator once at a store, and I got a dollar for Saturday. <laughs> and my mother said, give the dollar to Grandma. So I ran over to Grandma. I gave her the buck. <laughs> I did everything. Henny Youngman is our guest. The Steve Martirano program continues on a Friday afternoon. Stay with us. A letter to Louise's Homestyle Pasta Company from pasta lover Mary Lou Oignabeni. Dear Louise's, when I was a little girl, almost every Sunday I helped my mother make homemade pasta from recipes that had been in our family back to my great-grandmother in Abruzzi. Today, my husband and children love homemade pasta, but I don't always have time. So I serve Louise's. Of all the brands of frozen pasta at the supermarket, my family says Louise's tastes the most like my own homemade pasta. But Louise's is a lot less work. So with Louise's in my freezer, I can serve my family ravioli, tortellini, stuffed shells, gnocchi, cavatelli, almost any time. My family loves Louise's because Louise's tastes the most like homemade. We love your pasta. Mary Lou Agnabeni. Your family will love Louise's homestyle pasta too, because Louise's tastes the most like homemade. Heroin. On the street, it goes for ten to fifteen dollars a bag. In prison, it's a hundred dollars a bag. Inside MCI Walpole, prisoners can't get out. But somehow drugs like heroin get in. Of all the drugs intended for inmates, only 50% get confiscated. Why does this happen? New Center 5's Ron Golubin shows you a view of prison life never before seen. An exclusive look at what really goes on inside the walls on New Center 5 tonight at 6. Then at 7.30 on the award-winning Chronicle. It has long been a shrine to the brave men and women who died for our country. Today, Arlington National Cemetery is the resting place for all kinds of heroes, from presidents to astronauts, and even a world-class boxer. Join Peter Mahegan as we explore America's Garden of Stone. The stories of our times on Chronicle, New England's nightly news magazine. Tonight at 7.30 on Channel 5. Going after the people who have been thumbing their nose at the law for a number of years. Thousands of taxpayers in Massachusetts are receiving bills for unpaid auto excise taxes, in some cases dating back to the 70s. They've hit me with two excise tax bills. One is 13 years old and the other one is 14 years old. If you drive a car, car tax the street. Hello, you have reached the deputy tax collector's office. I'm Jacqueline Goddard, WBZ News. Listen for our special report, the excise tax. Who's in the driver's seat? We'll examine who's really behind collection procedures and whether they're ethical. Listen all this week for the excise tax. Who's in the driver's seat? A WBZ News special report, only on Boston's news station, WBZ AM 1030. It is uh, 16 minutes away from the top of the hour, 16 before two. More with our guest, Henny Youngman, right after these top stories from WBZ News and a check on traffic as well. Well, the five-game suspension uh, will hold for the Rocket. Uh, Baseball Commissioner Faye Vincent upheld the suspension for Clemens' behavior during Game 4 of the playoffs last year. That suspension begins this evening. Roger will miss his turn in the rotation. Governor Weld, meanwhile, uh, is meeting this afternoon just around 2 o'clock with his cabinet uh, members after reports that he has okayed a billion dollars. That's one billion dollars in budget cuts. One critic says that upwards of 40,000 people will be abandoned by the state if the general relief fund is wiped out. Meanwhile, a Brockton man has been charged in the death of another man whose body was found in his backyard in Plymouth, Robert McGovern. Identified as the victim, Stephen Lee of Brockton reportedly has confessed to the crime. Full newscast coming up at the top of the hour, 2 o'clock here on WBZ, Boston's news station. Checking traffic with Jeff Brown in the BZ 24-hour traffic network. Jeffrey, what's happening? It is a lovely day in the neighborhood, Steve. And uh, we do have one minor problem, uh, 128 North by Walnut Street in the Saugus area. There's a breakdown off to the uh, right-hand side of the road, something to keep your eyes open for. Elsewhere, it uh, seems to be a pretty nice day all around. We do have a left lane restriction on the Mass Pike eastbound, uh, heading from the Alston-Brighton tolls into the Prue Tunnel. That is uh, still in effect. It's been there uh, for pretty much most 
most of the day today. Elsewhere in the downtown area, the Tobin Bridge has cleared out nicely, lower deck of 93, holding up just a bit at uh, Community College, making your way into uh, into the merge right now. The artery moves well in both directions, and the expressway does, too. Jeff Brown, WBZ, 24-hour traffic network. Something exciting is going on at Cambridge Side Galleria, Emerald Square, Liberty Tree, and Arsenal Malls. Yahoo! Hi, everybody. I'm Richard Simmons with a great way to shape up your shopping dollars. Ready? And scratch and save and scratch and win. Get a scratch, save, and win card at the mall now through Sunday, April 28th. Come on, pick it up. Then use your card to save up to 50% on regular price merchandise at participating stores. But don't stop there. Now win. Just scratch and match the daily winning numbers and instantly win great prizes. Like a trip for four to St. Martin with air transportation by American Airlines. Something special in the air. Accommodations at the Hotel Mount Vernon and more. All right. Scratch, save, and win. Now through Sunday at Cambridge Side Galleria, Emerald Square, Liberty Tree, and Arsenal Malls. No purchase necessary. Must be 18 to enter. Some restrictions apply. See card for details. Void where prohibited. Feel the spirit. The spirit of New England. WBC Boston. Welcome back, friends. And uh, let me uh, give somebody a chance to go to the movies. I have a couple of passes to see the new Sylvester Stallone film, Oscar, which... Uh, Opens uh, near a theater, uh, in a theater near you, uh, I think today, as a matter of fact, uh, including the South Shore Plaza in Braintree. Uh, or you can go see the film of your choice, far be it from us to force you to see Sylvester Stallone. Anyway, if you're the fifth caller at 931-1030, 931-1030, we'll uh, give you those passes. And you'll qualify for the grand prize drawing, a general cinema prize package. Uh, and that includes a $50 gift certificate to the Hilltop Steakhouse, two free six-month memberships to L.A. Fitness, a $40 gift certificate to any Chili's restaurant, and four Sylvester Stallone video cassettes, my goodness, courtesy of the Saturday matinee, including Rocky and Tango and Cash and all your favorite Sylvester Stallone movies. Tom Bergeron announces that winner Monday morning, only from General Cinema and WBZ AM 1030. Henny Youngman is our guest. He's been in the studio with us uh, for this hour. Uh, we're chatting with him about his incredible career, which spans, obviously, a very long time. And uh, his new book will be out. When's the book coming out? Any minute. Any, 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 no, it's about ready now. A yeah. few last-minute changes. Had uh, the writer, Steve Gall, and the young guy used to be on the Times. He's very good. And uh, he called my son, Gary, who's on the coach. Gary just made a movie called Doorman. My son Gary's uh -huh. a writer, producer. I know him personally. Is he? <laughs> and I have two little grandkids out there. One is seven, Jimmy and a girl. Lawrence four. Do you uh, you you live and in? As soon as I go out there, yeah. right to Toys R Us. No right. waiting. Is that right? Well, wait a second. I, after all uh, all of the achievements in your career, I mean, uh, you've you've worked everywhere. The crowning uh, glory for your grandchildren, anyway, oh, yeah. must be that you're going to be a cartoon character, right? Yeah, Tiny Toons for Steven Spielberg. Then they'll know Grandpa really is somebody. Oh, yeah, that's all right? I look at. Yes, <laughs> and I got a, I got a grandson, Larry Kelly, in New York. He's thirty-five. Can be thirty-six if I let him. <laughs> He complains about headaches. I said, when he got out of bed, his feet first. <laughs> Jumps out of bed. And uh, he's a comic. He's an actor. And uh, I love him very dearly. And I got a daughter, Marilyn Kelly. She's with Pack Brothers. They're old-time photographers. She runs the office. And a lot of them backed away from me, not to disturb me with my career. That's what I find out, because my daughter's a great mimic. My grandson's a pretty good actor, but there's not enough work, and I keep telling him. If something happens to me, and you don't pay your rent, they will throw you out on the street. All your furniture will be on the street. It'll look like an outdoor cafe. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but he don't listen, so I try. You try to keep him out of the business, huh? Well, no. If you're good at it, you've got a steady job, great. But if you're only going to work 10 years, Doesn't make any 10 sense. days, I can't see any sense to it. I had to make the rounds. I knocked my brains out. And you got to do it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Yeah. But you're, Henny, a, you're a rare. I'm sorry, Arnie. Go ahead. Yeah. Didn't he get a job as a mom back? Henny? Yeah. He stands behind a truck. He's a mom back. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought only Italians got jobs like that. Are you Italian? <laughs> yes, I am. I love the Italian people. During World War II. Yes. 
An Italian girl saved my life. How did she, she, do she hid me in her cellar. It was in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I remember that. Um, I want to know about the cartoon character, though. Uh, I Stacey. did all my jokes. Whatever they told me to do, I did. And now they'll draw, they'll draw a character around me. If it's a hit, I'll be on the cartoons every week. This is Steven Spielberg's uh, television show called Tiny Toons. And, uh, do, do you know if the, char- if the cartoon character is going to be you or is it going to be a rabbit? Me. I did my jokes. Yeah, but I mean, it could be coming out of the mouth of a, of a rabbit. Well, right? I wouldn't allow that. You wouldn't? <laughs> William Morris Agency, my agency, wouldn't allow that. They it's, protect you pretty good. It's got to be you. I did a, a lot of new things that uh, I've always wanted to do. I had a calendar last year. Every day a different joke, a pad. That looks like it'll be a yearly thing with me, though. I got people who are going to sell my calendar. I got $10,000 for a lady to give her jokes, to do a calendar. She sold 200000 to one firm. So she's going to do pretty good. Even with 40 cents a calendar... She'll make eighty thousand dollars for herself. I mean, uh, uh, you you have taken uh, and you told us a couple of the more extraordinary assignments: the uh, gourmet bus. I love that. Uh, the QE two. Uh, you did the airplane. Uh, I do the yacht. Uh, oh, the guy's having the party. He's going to go up the Hudson. Yeah. Uh, does that play? Uh, does that pay well? I mean, sure. It's a nice. Got to be able to afford me. No kidding. Well, of sure. course. You don't do it gratis. You get paid. Of course. Henny Youngman's going to be at my party. And, of course, he looks like it's nice, right? Come yeah. to the party. Henny Youngman's going to be. I shake hands and sign autographs, and I get to meet the people. Years ago, when I was with Ted Collins, with Kate Smith, I got $1,000 to sit with 10 guys. The guy bought Joan Crawford and myself. We sat there like we were his chums. <laughs> <laughs> the guy took pictures. And he, <laughs> he probably got a... Uh, Got a thrill out of it. And then I got paid to get down to a Kentucky Derby to sit with a guy, a very wealthy man. He had six, a couple of people from the picture business. He had me, and we sat there. We saw the Kentucky Derby, took photos with him. So he went around and flashed the photos like he knew us well. Uh, and you didn't have to perform. You just had to go down just and enjoy the race. Sit with him, have, have a bite to eat, you know, hot dog. And uh, we saw the debut and got paid to be there. It's a wonderful country, isn't it, Mr. Yeah, Youngman? It's, it's great. A great <laughs> it's really a great, great country. All these side jobs come along and come in handy. How could you turn these down? You couldn't I turn don't. these down. That's right. I don't. <laughs> you don't turn these down. Did you write Take My Wife, Please? I didn't write it. I said it during a Case Smith show. I had a half hour. The writers came in the last minute. Sadie came in with seven ladies from the Hadassah, yeah. from a meeting. She said, honey, I need eight tickets for these women. A half hour before the show, luckily the ushers used to take care of me. They saved seats for me. So I, I got the eight seats, and I said, look, take Sadie, please. Take my wife, please. Like getting her out of here, get her out of here because right. get her out in the audience. <laughs> I got to do my joke. Maybe I got to get the jokes together. Yeah. And it stuck. It, it, may be, it may be the single most famous one, one-liner ever, correct? Yeah, it's in a book, a private book they have now with all these sayings. Bartlett's familiar That's quotations. That's right, in there, yeah. That's edited by a gentleman who lives right over here in, in uh, Cambridge, right across the Is river. Is he still here. around, Bartlett? He's certain. Oh, no, Bartlett. I use his pairs. Bart- <laughs> <laughs> Henny Youngman is our guest, and we will uh, conclude our conversation with him. It's been a delight. Stay with I us. I hope you get to see me. Will you have time? We're to talking with Kevin know. Conroy about his 9X mobile telephone. Hi there. Now, you're an advertising executive, right, Kevin? A high-powered advertising executive, yes. And I understand you're an extremely heavy mobile phone user, right? You mean heavy like use the phone a lot or heavy like portly, big, out of heavy shape? Heavy like use the phone a lot. Then, yes, I'm an extremely heavy mobile phone user. Well, have you heard about 9X Mobile's new prime discount caller rate plan, where for $65 you get 120 minutes of usage a month, plus discounts of up to 25% for calls made over the usage allowance? Of course I have, and all their other calling plans, too. I work for their ad agency. Really? In fact, I'm paying for this time. Get to the 1-800 number, quick. For more information about 9X Mobile's prime discount caller rate plan, call 1-800-443-BELL. Again? That's 1-800-443-BELL for more information. Very good. Now, let's talk about this expense report we got from you last month. (laughs) There's some items on there. To learn more about this rate plan or 9X Mobile's new anniversary rebate offer, call 1-800-443-BELL. For mobile communications, the answer is 9X. Have you heard of Operation Lockup? 
Because car theft has become a major problem in this country, the National Fraternal Order of Police is sponsoring Operation Lockup. 220,000 policemen, represented by the National Fraternal Order of Police, have dedicated this campaign to the reduction of auto theft. These same policemen, 220,000 strong, recommend one anti-theft device for this effort. The one recommended by police is the club. The highly visible bright red club fits easily across the steering wheel and once locked in place makes steering virtually impossible. Possible. Priced at under $60, the club is affordable and insured for up to $200 of your insurance deductible. Most important of all, the club drastically reduces car theft, thus allowing police more time to deal with more serious crimes. Help your police to protect you by joining Operation Lockup and buy the club. But don't be fooled by imitators. Remember, it must say the club on the handle. The club is available at Montgomery Ward, The Fair, True Value, Service Star Hardware, Lapin Auto, and Auto Palace. United Van Lines presents Stiller and Mira. Myrna, you're not holding up your end. How are the couches heavy? One more flight of stairs. We got it made. There's an easier way to move. Call United Van Lines. We save money by moving ourselves. Trust me. Last time I trusted you, we had twins. Call United. What's wrong with the truck I rented? It smells funny inside. United Vans are sanitized treated. Myrna, the couch. United Van Lines are the quality movers. Okay, Myrna, drop it. Now? Now. Myrna! And United takes the pain out of moving. United Van Lines. We're in the yellow pages. When you have something that needs moving, call the experts at Taylor United Van Lines in Wakefield. They're a full-service moving company, including home, office, storage, electronics, and trade shows. Taylor has clean, modern equipment. Their air-ride moving vans offer the best possible protection for everything they transport. Taylor's service is always prompt and friendly. Whether moving locally, across the country, or internationally, make your move to Taylor United Van Lines. Call Kim for a free estimate. In Massachusetts, 1-800-287-7. Outside Massachusetts, 1-800-552-2667. Sleeper Showcase, a beautiful home furnishing store on Highland Avenue in Needham, is going out of business and closing their doors forever. Now save 30 to 70% on brand names like Stearns & Foster, Hooker, Century, Sealy, and People Lounger. Handsome custom leather sofas that open up as a sleep sofa. Large sectionals that are sleep sofas. Listen to these prices. Twin size sleepers with quality inner spring mattress from $298 or full size from $327 and queen size from only $397. Everything must go. Twin mattress and foundation sets from only $129. Full size sets at $169 and queen size only $219. Everything must be sold. All leather sectionals 40% off and Roman size recliners from $149. All lamps and accessories 50% off. Going out of business. Sleepers Showcase, 238 Highland Avenue in Needham. Take exit 19A off 128. Open daily 10 to 9, Saturday 10 to 5, and Sunday 12 to 5. MasterCard, Visa, and financing available. A couple of minutes away from the top of the hour. Let me tell you about two kinds of auto thieves that you ought to be worried about. There's the amateur. They steal it just for the joyride. There's the pro. They steal it for a living. Now, you can thwart the uh, joyrider sometimes by uh, anti-theft devices, but the pro is going to steal the car no matter how you protect it. That's why LoJack developed their total security system. It includes LoJack Prevent and Retrieve. LoJack Prevent, that's the passive starter disabler that thwarts the joyrider. And LoJack Retrieve is the patented stolen vehicle recovery system that allows the police to find your car when the pro gets his hands on it. And now LoJack has added its anti-theft prevent system with something called LoJack Alert, a remote alarm system with a siren that goes off when the thief enters the car. So now you can have even more protection against the amateur. And the good news is that the complete LoJack system, including Alert and the patented Retrieve device, qualifies you for a whopping... 35% discount on your comprehensive auto insurance. For more details, you can call your new car dealer at 1-800-44-LOJACK. That's 1-800-44-L-O-J-A-C-K. And when you do, you should ask for Ann. We want to thank uh, uh, Henny Youngman for uh, spending this time uh, with us. Uh, it's a delight meeting you. I mean, I've enjoyed thank you. you. Uh, I appreciate your time and your audience. And if you get a chance, I'd like you to come out and see me. I know you're busy, but... I, I appreciate the offer. Thank you, thank you, Henny. And Arnie, thanks for coming by. Goodbye. Good luck. My and, pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh... Hope I see you again soon. And just keep... You're going to just keep working, right? You just, thank you. Just going to keep working. And by the way, it's available for, uh, for cruises, bus tours, bar mitzvahs. Bar mitzvahs, weddings. 
<laughs> Henny Youngman, thank you for joining us here at WBC. It's a pleasure, a really. Pleasure. Thank okay. you so much. Stay with us. We have news uh, coming up at the uh, top of the hour, and then we will uh, move back into our more familiar mode of uh, kvetching about the things that go on in the Bay State. Stay with us. Boston, WBC. Boston, the spirit of New England. Boston's news station, WBZ AM 1030, is committed to bringing you the latest local, national, and international news 24 hours a day. WBZ Boston. Group W Radio, a Westinghouse broadcasting station, in stereo. It's 2 o'clock, Boston temperature 72. WBZ AccuWeather meteorologist Alex Osnowski calling for sunny and warm this afternoon. Highs well into the 70s and partly cloudy tonight. I'm Diane Stern, WBZ News. Governor Bill Weld is scheduled to meet this hour with his cabinet secretaries to discuss ideas on how to slice a billion dollars from next year's budget. Among the proposals that are on the table, the elimination of general relief, the end of the registry police, and the dismantling of the Executive Office of Communities and Development. Human services activists say the plan to end general relief is appalling because it would end minimum benefits to 40,000 poor residents, including the handicapped, the mentally ill, and the disabled. Don't look for Roger Clemens in the Red Sox dugout tonight as the team takes on Kansas City. The five-game suspension stands, so said baseball commissioner Faye Vincent today at a decision around noontime. It stems from Clemens' behavior on the mound during Game 4 of the playoffs last fall. General Manager Lou Gorman says he's relieved that the matter is now history. The commissioner would uphold the league president. There was no question on mine he would probably uphold him. But I'm delighted that it's over. Roger's had his say and got some points in that were made, and uh, it's over and done and behind us now. A $10,000 fine was also upheld. Clemens has had a great start so far this season. He's 4-0. He will be missing his scheduled start on Sunday. U.N. Secretary General Javier Perez de Cuellar says the United Nations will take over the U.S.-built refugee camp at Sako in northern Iraq. A U.S. diplomat says a full transfer will probably take a matter of weeks. President Bush is expressing confidence that the Iraqis will steer clear of some of the refugees. The president isn't worried that Saddam will back off the new agreement to keep Iraqi forces away from the new Kurdish enclaves. The Iraqis will comply, he said, because, quote, they don't want to tangle with us again. He was asked how he could be sure that Iraq's word is good. Our forces, he answered, are there to make sure it's good. That's ABC's Kyle Gibson at the White House. Bush says some sticky problems remain despite some progress in setting up a Middle East peace conference. Secretary of State James Baker says he got some answers when he met with the Israeli Prime Minister. Baker is now flying back to the U.S., cutting short his Middle East mission. His 96-year-old mother died of apparent heart failure. We check the roads right now, and for that, here's Jeff Brown with the WBZ 24-Hour Traffic Network. How are we doing, Jeff? Okay, Diane, we've got a breakdown being cleared right now, 128 North by a Walnut Street in Linfield to watch out for. It's off to the side of the road and not really much of a hazard anymore, but just something that's uh, been going on out there. Also, the WBZ Cellular One phone force reports a breakdown on the Leverett up-ramp once you get off the off the uh, the up-ramp itself. It is in a tricky position, as it says, right as you enter the expressway, so do keep an eye open for that. You know, I believe Mr. Youngman was 85 years old when this was recorded. I hope you enjoyed that show with Steve Martirano. What better way to close out the month of April with some foolishness from the one and only Henny Youngman? Let me know what you thought. Leave a comment, join Patreon, or email the show. I'll see you all here next week on 6 o de Mayo. Eh, closing the vault and leaving this world a little sillier than we found it. For Nick's Comedy Stop, Omaha, Charm, Spike Jones, the Flatbush Ramblers, the Boston Highlighters, the Bay Ridge Five, Rocco the Coat Check Girl, Playing for Pleasure or Revenge, Montgomery Ward, the Fair, True Value, Service Star Hardware, Lappin Auto and Auto Palace, Stiller and Mira, the Yellow Pages, the Qualified Fuel Oil Dealers of Massachusetts, Texaco, the QE2. Dial a joke, Milton Burl, Red Buttons, The Residence Inn, A and W Root Beer, General Cinemas, The Club, Low Jack, William Morrow Publishing, Fawcett Books, Bartlett's Familiar Quotations, The Latin Quarter, Mary Lou Oignabaini, Louise's Pasta, Carl Bertolini, The Boston Costume Shop, Diane Stern, Jeff Brown, Alex Osnowski, Jackie Goddard, Peter Mead, David Brudnoy, Old-fashioned, no-frills radio, 
The Friars Club, Arnie Archer, Henny Youngman, and Steve Matarano. For all of that stuff, I'm Tony Nesbitt.